Hi, this is Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll be giving you a tour of my MacBook and show you some tips on how to make your MacBook more aesthetic. The first thing you can do is to decorate the exterior of your MacBook. This is one of my favorite things to do. A few of my friends also got inspired by how I decorate my laptop, so I gave them some sick stickers. What I love to do is to decorate around the Apple logo. It kind of gives it a more coherent look. And I also make sure I use stickers with characters, so it kind of keeps me company. I finished with my laptop. I already know this one's gonna wear out soon because it's right under my right hand. This is what my desktop looked like before and this is what it looks like now. A good wallpaper makes so much difference to the aesthetic of your laptop. I actually drew this wallpaper myself because I couldn't find any high quality wallpapers. I placed the furniture in a few different places. If you're interested, I'll link it below so you can download it. The best place to find aesthetic photos is obviously Pinterest. So there are so many different kinds. I'll show you a few different ways that you can actually customize your wallpaper. Occasionally, if you love wallpapers that are illustrations, it can be sometimes posted as a little bit blurry on Pinterest. So what I recommend doing is to find the artist on Twitter and download the picture from Twitter yourself. How you can change your wallpaper is either by going to settings or you can just click with two fingers and change wallpaper. For example, this is a really cute drawing, but it would be too small since it's a square for a MacBook wallpaper, so you can download it. And when you change your wallpaper, you can just click center when you change the wallpaper. You can also edit the color to any color that you would like. It can be any color. The wallpaper impacts the aesthetic of your laptop a lot. So if, whenever you're sick of your laptop, you can just always change the wallpaper. And of course, you want to organize the files on your MacBook desktop to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So the next step is to make folders and organize everything on your desktop. And when you make a folder, you can actually customize the icon super easily on MacBook. You don't even need to download the image. So for example, I love this icon. I can just copy the image and go back to my file and click the file icon on the top and command V. That way the photo will be posted. If you want the background to be clear, you have to remove the background and change the photo to a PNG. So that's what I did with these ones. They were PNG. Search up cute aesthetic folder PNG. And if it is a PNG, when you open it, it will give you this grid view. So this is a really simple way to make it more aesthetic. If you love, um, if you love any cartoons, etc., you can just search up PNG of the photo that you would like. I used to never have widgets on my MacBook. I feel like I honestly am missing out on a lot because widgets can be a really easy way to see the tasks that you need to get done. And the apps that you have on your phone that is compatible with widgets, they will also show up on your MacBook. What I have is my reminders app. I use it once in a little bit the Reminders app is really convenient because you can just tell Siri to add reminders for you. And I also have a clock here. I added the clock just to make it a rectangle. This is my Apple calendar and this is my Outlook calendar because our school uses an Outlook email so I do have to use my Outlook calendar. In case I forget to add anything from my Outlook to my Apple Calendar, I just have it here. And this is my Apple Calendar. In desktop and dock settings, you can change the widget color to monochrome. It just looks a bit nicer when it's monochrome to me. So I just change it to monochrome. There are also other apps that you can customize the widgets to different colors. If you download the app color widget, but I just like to keep it simple and also avoid 
and also avoid having too many apps and filling up my storage. So I just keep it simple and make it monochrome or the full color. And now let's delve deeper into settings. And in settings, you can change your appearance of the MacBook either to light, dark, or auto. Auto would be light when it's bright outside and dark after sunset. I like to have it as light because I don't really like my apps dark. It just, I just see things better when it's in white. My accent color is multicolor. You can change it to pink. So basically small little things like for example if we open the notes app and your your typing flash would be pink and normally if you add any links the color would be yellow but if you change it to pink the color would be pink and also your highlight color would also be changed to pink you can also edit this in here and change it to any color you like either gray if you are more minimalistic or have it as multicolor, which is just default to what apple gives you I like to have it as default, so it's just less confusing for me and I just like it better. One of my favorite things about MacBook is the dock. I typically have my dock always showing. I don't like hiding it. I feel like I'm more productive when I see my dock so I can see what apps I have open so far and also access each one really easily. I did decide to hide it for the sake of this video. You can also have the view of your desktop as more space. So I typically have it as default. Things are a little bit bigger and I just like it that way. This is my dock. I know I have a lot of apps here, but you can definitely add and remove apps that you don't really use. I like to have everything in sight. So I have a lot of things in my dock and these are some of my favorite apps. So let me introduce them to you. The first app I'm going to talk about is Scrindle. A few of my friends DM'd me and they were interested. Scrindle is a powerful note-taking tool and mind mapping tool. You can also use it to create flashcards to boost your learning. This is my Scrindle interface and there's my desk, cards, boards, tags, tasks, and web links. You can create cards on your desk and you can also change your desk to a board. So you can have different boards. I use my desk kind of as like a pin board where I put all of my tasks and ideas. It's basically like your desk of your workspace and you can put everything you need on your desk. And what I love to do is create additional cards and make them into different colors to highlight which one's more important. I use blue as my master's list and I use red as something important, yellow as less important, and then gray as some subtask that isn't really important or like ideas I have. I also use Scrindle as a research tool to help me guide my thought process and my tasks. Scrindle is constantly developing with new features and if you're interested, I'll link it down below. Another app I use is Notion. I actually haven't used Notion that much so I haven't updated this in a while. I just use it kind of as a dashboard to organize all my to-dos and all my schedules. I have both GoodNotes and Notability. This is GoodNotes 5. They have already come out with 6, but this is GoodNotes. I use it for tutoring kids or miscellaneous stuff. A lot of people were asking me if I what note-taking app I use. Notability is my main note-taking app, so I have a lot of things in Notability. It basically has all my life in Notability. I used to only use Notability on my iPad, but I really like typing notes. So I have downloaded it on my laptop. Google Chrome is my go-to browser, but I use Microsoft Bing as my search engine. I don't know, I've, I've just gotten used to Bing and I've stopped using Google. Occasionally I would switch to Google, but most of the time I use Microsoft Bing. Yeah, there was a time where my teacher asked the class if anyone uses Microsoft Bing and I was too embarrassed to raise my hand. 
Another thing is to change the appearance of your browser. You can edit it into different themes. There's also aesthetic themes like art and design where there's softer looks that you can change it to. And also darker looks depending on your vibe. These are my two accessories I have for my MacBook. This is a multi-port adapter. I never really thought it was really that important, but in terms of like presentations and using SD cards or USBs, this is really convenient since Apple only has its USB-C ports and also the headphone jack. So I find this really convenient. This is a hard drive. It's one TB from SanDisk. This thing is so convenient, especially when you use your MacBook for a while and you're, you just run out of storage. This is what I do to keep all my really, keep the files that I don't really use very often. And it just cleans up my space. And also since it's one terabyte, I don't have to really worry about it being full. Well, I do have a lot of stuff in here. I totally recommend getting this if you're having trouble and running out of storage on your MacBook or any laptop, honestly. I have the USB-C version, but it also has the USB converter and stuff. My mom got this for me and it's a life changer. I totally recommend. I actually don't have that many apps on my MacBook. I like to keep things simple and minimalistic just to prevent me from running out of storage. If you have any questions or any videos that you would like to see, feel free to comment down below. And that is it for today. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.